Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today what we're going to be doing is more work on the CP500. Um, what I wanted to do is break apart the carbs, have a quick discussion on what I'm going to do with the carbs, um, take off, finish taking this off, and pop it off the radiator, and also finally get to have a look at the exhaust. So in today's video, that's that's my plan is to break apart the carbs, get them ready for ultrasonic cleaning, get this off. Um, have a look at what we're dealing with there, get the radiator off and have a look at what we're dealing with the exhaust. Might not get the exhaust off in this video because I have a feeling that's going to be a challenge, but we'll see. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to talk about what I have in my head right now for this bike because I have a few ideas. Not fully 100% locked in yet because I'm not sure what is in my ability to do. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So that's, that's what's coming, that's what's coming. Okay, let's have a look at these carbs. Um, there's a couple of coolant lines on this carb that I probably won't be putting back on. So there's one of them. Um, this is another one here, I think. And the reason I'm not going to be putting them back on is because what they're for is not actually cooling, even though they're connected to cooling lines. They're for um, heating the carbs, actually, to, to stop, to try to stop what's called icing. Um, that's when you have ethanol heavy fuel um, in cold weather will, will ice and it's, it, do, it does what it sounds in the tin it just gets too cold basically uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue here so because uh, this bike will never really be used in super cold weather or whatever else so my plan is just to, to not use that stuff uh, that cooling line at all blank it off which also means I can make you know the whole carb section in, in the bike look a lot cleaner so that's what that's what my plan is anyway for now what we're going to do is break these down and pop, get them into the ultrasonic bath at some stage later. You won't see them in today's video, but that is the plan, is to get all this apart and broken down so it can be cleaned. I have a feeling I'm going to be replacing a lot of screws on this. I think this is going to be the biggest challenge um, with this bike is rust. There's just rust everywhere. And I really don't want it to turn into something that... Um, I have to drill out too much of. If I have to drill out some of the screws, like that one is gonna have to be drilled out. That one is, it's actually just cheese. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'd say I'd say there's gonna be a lot of off-camera drilling out. Like that is, that they're just mush. Yeah, okay, all, all of these screws are mush. I'm gonna see does my Dremel have a kit to take out these. Okay, so I will probably cut a channel into these ones with the Dremel, and these ones I'm seem, I seem to be able to actually open with a, a good grips. <laughs> so just to show you what I'm doing, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll remove them, and I'll just cut a notch into this one, so we'll do that now. Don't forget your safety glasses. You see, the plan is, that's about as wide as that, so I'll just cut a notch, and see can I then, see can I then turn it out. to cut too deep when you're doing that otherwise you might not uh, have enough screw left to actually turn I just need to find my bigger screwdriver which is right here there we go that worked ingenuity and all that huh so obviously um, and if you don't know what this is by the way it's your choke bar so pretty clearly we're gonna need a new one of them anyway um, but yeah so look it's, it's working that's what matters. Okay, so I have this now loosened off. I'm just gonna finish taking it out, and yeah, like that that metal on those bolts. And I, I'm, I would use the uh, those the print the, the thing that you do that for. I'd, I'd use them around that, calling that a a metal bolt because it's it's really not a metal bolt or barely and my other trick has worked on all of these bolts so far and that one because no screwdriver is getting in at them so there you go they're all they're all now loosened as well so maybe a screwdriver will turn them out the rest of the way I'll have to do it all with the the grips I would say which is a bit annoying, but anyway. Oh yeah, they're still pretty tight. But the good news is, is if I can avoid, you know, breaking any of these bolts off while they're in there, um, that is a win for me. Because then I don't have to try, you know, fix something as well as just replace the screw. I'd much rather just 
have to replace this screw, uh, which obviously I'm going to have to because they're absolutely, they're terrible. So I'm, I'll finish taking these out and we'll come back then. And there we go. So the springs are still good and strong in here, uh, which is nice. These plastic caps and stuff I'm gonna clean by hand. I don't wanna put them into the ultrasonic bath because I don't wanna damage them. Uh, same as the diaphragms. So we're just gonna really carefully try to take these out because oftentimes these don't like coming out. And you just wanna be really careful not to, to tear these diaphragms because they are expensive to replace. So there we go. Um, you also do wanna take out this, but I'm actually not sure how that one comes out. Like the good news about this bike is because it was in use, it doesn't look like it's suffered too much, um, too much of the sticking issues the Jigster had, it's just filthy. So those diaphragms need a good cleaning anyway, and yeah, so does all of this, it's absolutely filthy in there. Just to make my life easier, I'm gonna pop off these uh, coolant lines. Also, anyone who has an, op uh, an opinion on the blanking thing, let me know because I did a bit of research on it, obviously, um, before I even thought about doing it, but I can't see any reason not to just blank it because, you know, I really don't want to redo the coolant lines anyway, and they are, they are in a bit of a state, to put it bluntly. Okay, so that's all those absolutely nasty, um, pipes dealt with, gives me a little bit more space to work. Oh, these do not want to move either. Hmm. Hmm. My head. Heat for all this would probably be better, but anyway. These carbs are definitely gonna need all new screws and everything else. So if anyone knows somewhere good to get them, please do let me know. I think I'll have to drill out these two little tap things here. Um, I will come back to you when that's done. Okay, with uh, a lot of <laughs> downward pressure from my considerable weight <laughs> and a bit of effort, I got these two things off here. And they're not going back on. Um, and all they are is like literally a little, little kink, so I'll just fill that in with a screw later and make it look nice. Um, well, as nice as it's gonna get. I also got this out with, again, a lot of downward pressure. Um, and like that, so I mean like, I am putting all of my weight down on these to get them to move, which is not much fun. I'm also going to see can I get something um, to adjust the, the idle similar to the Jixer, one that, you know, it's, it's like a, a long one so that I can adjust it from far away, but there's the, the idle adjuster, that's actually in fine, fine condition. So that's all of those cracked open. And the thing about this bike is it was actually running pretty fine. Um, so it just goes to show you <clears throat> how resilient these carbs are. It's pretty clean in fairness, I'll uh, tell you it was running. But there's the old, I'd say to be honest, it, it, these hadn't been taken apart in a long time. I don't know who of you were here for the Jigsaw, but that is so much cleaner than the Jigsaw because it was running. And this is why you need to keep these things running. You know, I started this up very recently before I took it apart, but it'll just tell you, you know, why you should take them apart and clean them fairly regularly because all of these bolts are, you know, these bolts and screws are essentially nightmare fuel for someone uh, to come in afterwards and take apart. I mean, I had to cut two of them with the Dremel. I had to loosen some of them off with the clamps. I mean, these should just be, you know, these should be something you just come in and open. Um, and look, I know not everyone has the capability to do this or the facilities to do this or whatever else or the desire to do this. Um, but it's just something to, to keep an eye on and maybe get friendly with your local garage if you're keeping a bike like this because this could have done with this a long time ago, this, this cleaning a long time ago. But the jets all look really good, really clean, so we'll reuse them. Well, actually we probably won't, we're gonna to have to size them up, so. Yeah, I don't think the camera can focus on it, but this is a 122, it says it right there. So this is the original um, main jet, which is good to know. These have never me been messed with. And it's really clean, so I'm obviously just gonna keep all of them as well, keep them to one side, 
uh, in case I do need them, in case I do put back on the airbox at any stage. Very, very unlikely. But, you know, gotta keep them. And I, what the plan is, and I'll show you how I'm gonna measure for the pod filters now in a minute. But the plan is to go to pod filters. And this is a 38, so that's also the standard pilot. So, everything on this is standard, which is always nice to see. That's the main jet seat thing, I know what you call it. Um, but again, all looks really clean because this bike was running. Because petrol, petrol cleans it itself. Um, you know, it's, it's only when you leave these sit that it becomes a problem. Our needles and all that look good too, which is good. The floats look good and clean as well. Again, I'll clean them manually. And the other thing is, if you're watching the Jixer uh, stuff and you saw the trouble I was having with them, um, uh, level, you know, level, getting the floats the right level. These are non-adjustable floats, um, so that's nice. They just, they just sit where they sit, and that is, that is the way it is. I'm going to be really careful with because I don't want to damage them, but I do want to show you something. So, hold on. So you see that there? What you're looking for is if that's no longer flat and smooth. If there's a ridge eaten into it, and there's a little ridge eaten into this one, but nothing bad like you can see it is starting to go and if i can get them cheap enough i'll probably replace it anyway but that's fine um and that's what you're looking for you're looking for that wear but other than that now um this is as far apart as i'm going to take these i'm going to put them in uh, like this into the ultrasonic baths and just clean them up and see what happens and just as well to, to point out i'm going to do two wash cycles the first wash cycle um i'm going to leave in what i have in there it's old fluid and I'm just going to give them one good wash through and uh, after that I'll put in the full carb cleaner to, to clean them off more. But this all this shitty dirt and stuff I'm just going to knock off with the first run with the older stuff that's in there. And also what I'm also going to do is measure um, this width here. So this is what we have to sit down over. So that is 54 and a half mil. 55 so if we just get 55 mil uh, pods to fit down onto that that's how I'm going to replace um, the airbox 55 mil pods and that they'll just sit there and that means we'll have to rejet it too so all of that to come in later videos so next what we're going to do is take off the radiator because um, I want to see how bad this exhaust is so that is my next challenge Now you can see what I was saying about the fan. <laughs> it is uh, like that. I don't even need to remove the bolts. It's very handy. It's just, uh, there you go. The fan is unbolted. <laughs> it was hanging on by a thread. So this definitely has to be changed. And I'll probably change this as well if I can find a cheaper uh, unit too that has its own reservoir because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain now in a sec. So currently if you look at this, this pipe here, um, comes up to here and this is where you fill your coolant which is obviously not ideal and then that little thing there route your coolant down and back um, from your engine as well that's your your pipe down I'm not really sure why it's like that because you can see here this mix thing uh, there's just two pipes down and they, they split back in together and then just come down here to the back so I'm going to do a bit of research and see can I just do like a straight pipe from a new rad with its own reservoir back to the back of the engine personally I don't see why not um, like obviously there's a an overflow there's an overflow from here down to the back but an overflow can be fitted anywhere uh, other than that I really don't see the need for it um, because you know you still have your flow and return from your engine and I'm hoping I can just do that because that'd look it'd look neater. And that's what I want to do with this bike, because I'm not aiming for like a cafe racer or anything like that. I'm aiming for my own style and just clean up around the engine, make the engine look kind of classic as possible, more more minimalist as as much as I can. Now for the thing I have been looking forward to least is trying to get these exhaust stuff. So what I'm probably gonna do is looking at this is get some of the brake fluid I'm no longer using my old stuff and just kind of paint it in onto 
the exhausts. This one, I don't know what to do with this one. I'm gonna cut these bands here now and see how bad it is. Uh, or unscrew them. I'll probably just cut them because I'm lazy and I don't imagine I'll use them for anything. And then once the engine is out, we'll look at actually fixing those holes because I imagine the studs stuck in them or something. They have to come out. I have new studs ordered, new stainless studs ordered. This side I want to get out without breaking. That is, that's my goal. I want to get that side out without breaking it. Yeah, so hopefully we can do that. Okay, so after about five seconds consideration, I cut those metal straps and this exhaust is completely loose. Uh, and then I looked at this strap here holding this on after taking this, uh, the bolt here out and uh, this is completely rusted solid. So I've taken the brave decision to just cut the straps. That was a lot quicker than doing it any other way. <laughs> what a wonderful piece of equipment. <laughs> oh, what a lump of shite. Awful, truly, truly awful. Now, that's that bit done. Um, all we need to do now is take off the other exhaust header off the body of the engine. And I think, I think that's it. I don't think you can tell down anywhere else, is it? Oh no, it is right there. Okay, so that, that should open because it was protected by the engine. Um, so it should hopefully be not too rusted shut. Okay, so we'll be able to get that one off anyway, which is good. Um, for now what I'm going to do is soak those headers. I think that'll be, that'll be me done for now. I'm going to soak them and go get some food. Okay, so now we're going to see if we can get that um, exhaust off fully. But just to show you something nice first, so... While I was waiting for stuff to happen in the ultrasonic bath, I cleaned up the float bowl caps. Look at them, nice and shiny. Anyway. Let's get the exhaust off. So what I have done is, well actually I've done a couple of things. I'm gonna shave my head, because I got sick of my hair being long, uh, which is really annoying me. So yeah, my hair's gone. I wear hats most of the time anyway, so it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, and yeah, so got the bolts undone on the, the left hand pipe. Um, literally just patience and gentleness. Uh, that's what they look like. They're, they're, they're ruined, so I ordered new ones anyway. <coughs> And this is completely moving about, so I really hope that's recoverable. But we'll find out when we get the engine out anyway. That is that is what I'm going to do, is take the engine out. And there's one little bolt back here. I think that's the final mounting board for the exhaust. So, time to get that out. We're going to give it a, some uh, friendly taps of a hammer. The friendliest of taps seem to be working. Yes! The nastiness is gone. It is genuinely a real pity that someone didn't bring this to someone like me, say, because like all, all that other exhaust I took was just patience. Like all it was was patience. And then a bolt wouldn't have been sheared. Um, and if a bolt hadn't have been sheared, it would have made everything so much easier because now to get those bolts out is even going to be bad because they're snapped. So, you know, you need to get those studs out to replace them. Like on the other side, I'm just going to lock two nuts together and it'll pull out fairly easily, but on this side... I'm actually glad I'm taking the engine out, basically. It's just it's just nasty, but anyway. The exhaust is off. Uh, now we're just going to pop this thing off. So the only thing you need to be careful of up this end is the speedo sensor. Uh, you don't want to hurt the speedo sensor. Because they're actually expensive. Well, all of these things are kind of expensive, so you kind of want to mine them all. And I'd uh, pre-soaked all these bolts in, like, uh, basically WD-40. I think it's GT-85 I've over there. And the thing is, like, everyone says this, this fluid works, that fluid works, but the actual fact of the matter is all of them work, um, provided you're patient with them. You might have to dose it quite a few times to get it to work properly. So if it doesn't work first time, it doesn't mean it's not working. It just means it might need more time. So, my speedo sensor seems to be fairly jammed, but got it loosened with this trusty clamp. And there you go, the speedo sensor is just a wire. I don't know, can you see that? I hope you can, I don't want to zoom in too far. 
but that just screws in so I'm just going to leave that uh, to one side for safekeeping now I'm actually going to thread it back through the wheel and then I might oh I just absolutely stabbed myself in the hand there anyway what I might do is look at reusing this uh, these mount points for when I mount the headlight I don't think it's the same um, as on the, the CB500 with the round headlight but I'm going to have to mount the round headlight somewhere so I am considering there next all your uh, cables are kind of just held in place with these little clamps that are gener they generally bend out of the way quite easily but these ones are just kind of a bit frozen frozen in time like everything else now there is the cabling up to um, the actual speedo unit so I'll see what I'll do with that. I'm, I'm unlikely to reuse it, but I still don't want to damage it in case I do. So just on the back here, there's two tens bolting it in. They're both really, really loose already. They're like finger tight already, so I'm not sure why that is. And I think that's all that, that's holding the bracket itself on. Oh, one more ten. There's three tens. One more just up in the corner. And you should just be able to pull back your sleeve like that, and just plug these out. Oh, and the last one was just a bullet connector plugged itself out. So there's the frame for the CB. I, look, I probably am going to maybe sell these. So if anyone needs these, um, let me know. I might even paint them and clean them up and sell them on eBay or something. Um, but obviously, subscribers will get first option, and then that's the. The headlight unit so all you're looking to do is there's two plugs in there and one bullet connector um just try to get focus on it so there's the two plugs just pull back that sleeve uh one bullet connector two plugs just be careful and like these are in perfect perfect working order so they should be they should be good for someone and there you go so that was kind of um my my goals for this episode was to just get the radiator off, get this head section off, get the exhausts off, and then what that'll allow me to do is start working to get the engine out. Um, there's a bit of work in that, definitely. But we're getting there. So the whole goal here is to get this down to just, just the frame, and then I can paint the frame whatever color toaster wants. I'm not sure what color to go for yet. I was kind of thinking like of a, a, a purpley color. And then for the tank and stuff, go green. So green and purple. I think that'd look cool, like a really dark purple, but I'll see. Uh, I'll see, I don't know yet. And I think looking at those rear shocks, I might have to see about getting new ones because they're a bit shot. Um, they're not great. But yeah, main thing is we're, we're stripped down more. The front section is off. The exhaust were off, which was something I was kind of not worried about, but half concerned about. Um, and yeah, now now we can start working at getting that engine out once once I strip all these electrics off. But that won't take too long. I probably won't even show that on video because it's just kind of me. So there you go. Um, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, or if there's anything you'd like to see in particular, get an explanation of on the CB500, do let me know, and I'll do my best to show you. Um, personally I'm quite happy with the progress so far my whole goal is to keep this rolling chassis for as long as possible to just be able to move it around and once I get the engine out then I can lift it uh, so that should be a lot easier too but yeah colour scheme colour scheme I'll discuss soon uh, because it's Toaster's bike probably leave it up to her uh, the mag never will get a choice on that though well all patrons have a good choice on that but yeah hopefully you're enjoying this um, if, if you're not really the garage watch type of person I do apologize, we're still locked down here, there's not a whole pile I can do, um, other than just kind of push forward as much of my projects as I humanly can, uh, which I'm enjoying anyway, so it's not that big a deal, but yeah, if, if, you'd, if you're waiting for me to get back out on the bikes, that will hopefully be soon, and I have a first ride to do on the Jigsaw and stuff, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, anyway, um, I hope you did enjoy it, so thanks for watching. As always, a very special thank you to the patrons, uh, your legends. Um, thanks for all the conversations, the feedback and stuff recently. I know I've been hitting you with a lot of questions and I do I do appreciate your patience and feedback. It's it's very much appreciated. And as always, everyone else, if you have any feedback on any of the videos or, or questions or anything like that, do please let me know. I'm that's that's what I'm here for, you know, that's why I make videos. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it really. Uh, hope you hope you're excited for what this turns into. 
I have I have lots of ideas that I'll be discussing in an upcoming video, especially once we once we strip the engine out. I have lots of I have lots of thoughts. Uh, or maybe before, I'll see, I'll see. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Outro crew. Look at my bikes. I have to say, like, I know I know lockdown has been kind of shit, but one definitely not shit thing is I got I got that finished because Full disclosure, brought it for a spin into the shop to get some milk, even though the tires are terrible. I know, don't give out to me, I'm sorry. Oh my god, it's so much fun. I can't I can't wait. I can't wait to show you that bike.